Greetings, beloved. Thank you for tuning in today. It is the dream of many people to purchase homes. While many people choose to purchase a home that is already built, others may choose to build from the ground up. Either way, the builder is required to use a blueprint. A blueprint is defined as a design or a plan put on paper for the purpose of constructing a building successfully. The same way construction workers follow the blueprint in order to successfully build a house, likewise, Christians who want to build a solid family must be willing to follow God's blueprint to do so. Stay tuned as we discuss the design that God has given us to follow, God's blueprint for family. Say greetings to everyone and God bless you all for joining us today. My name is Brother Hawk Bolin and this is my wife, Sister Antoinette Bolin, and as always we're glad to bring you the word of the Lord concerning uh, God's blueprint for uh, family. Amen. Tonight we're going to have a discussion. Uh, I think that's going to be interesting to the to the listeners, those that are listening in. Uh, concerning God's will and and sometimes just the things that that goes on I guess you know uh, when you're trying to walk in God's perfect will for your life amen and we have a sister with us that's going to share with us if she don't mind uh, the, the 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 issue and the situation so that we can start there and address it and just go from there amen so if you will you can go ahead and, and share that I moved here a little over a couple of weeks ago because um, the Lord gave me a dream and told me that my husband was here. So, um, so I've been here and maybe like a few days ago, um, the father of my kids called me and he started saying that he wanted to get back together and he wanted to get married and all this. and. I was just like, like why now? Because we haven't been together in like three years, so it was just kind of out of nowhere. And I was like, is this just a distraction? And then I kind of felt myself like kind of leaning towards the possibility because it just seemed convenient. So, <laughs> like I know he's not the right person for me, and being with him would be defeating the purpose of me being here in the first place, but it's, it's just kind of a hard situation. And that's it. All right. Amen. So uh, we're going to go from there and uh, kind of, uh, I guess, bring some things out. And uh, as she stated, the Lord has showed her that her husband was here in Tennessee and of course, she's supposed to be a part of this ministry as well. And so um, then comes the father of her children, you know, saying that he wants to get married and he wants to, you know, to them two to be together. And, uh, and you were saying that he's not saved. No. Not saved. All right. So I would like for my wife to address uh, the issue because you were talking about how you were considered it or it was in your mind to to do that so if you would address that 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 part of it or however the Lord leads you to address uh, why a woman would um, why a woman would um, I guess consider that you know given the circumstances and things like that so that I, I just think that, you know, you being a woman, you'd understand a little bit better and be able to shed some light that maybe uh, men wouldn't be able to shed. So if you would address that. Um, well, I, I can speak about this particular subject from a personal experience, um, from my own personal experience and just from the experience of others that I've known just over the years, other women, 
And um, there are many situations where um, people try to either get married because of children that have um, come about as a result of their relationship or people try to stay married as a result of that. And of course in this situation you're not married yet so um, and you know that the Lord has already spoken concerning that situation. And I'm just kind of go backwards that I was in a situation myself where I was number one already with someone that the Lord did not designed for me to be with. I was already there or somebody that I just chose for myself for my own selfish reasons. And I stayed there in that marriage for a really, really long time trying to um, keep the family unit together because I don't know that there's one single woman on the face of this earth who does not want um, their children to have a father or father figure um, who does not want a husband, who you know, does not want two parents in the home there to train and rear the children. Um, and so that was something that I wanted because, number one, I didn't have it growing up. And so that was one of the, the vows. Okay, when I say I do, I'm saying I do, and divorce is not an option. And so, you know, this family unit has to stay together no matter what. Um, unfortunately, that wasn't God's plan, and so what ended up happening was I went through a lot of turmoil, a lot of disappointment, a lot of hurt, a lot of frustration unnecessarily because I was walking in my own way. I was following after what I thought was the right thing to do, and um, in essence, when I look back on all of that, and, and I know plenty of people who have the same perspective after they've gone through it and they've, oh, I'm going to keep it together for the children and, and things like that. Um, it does more damage to our children for us to give them a picture um, of any type of family life, married life, life in general that does not um, start with God being the head. Even if we're not saying, well, you know, kids, this isn't the husband that the Lord had for me, but I'm staying with this person anyway, and I'm going, and we don't have to actually say that, but they'll see the dysfunction that comes with us being outside of the will of God. And we don't, wanna, we don't want to train our children to live in dysfunction. Because what will happen is if you truly seek to be in the will of God and you allow yourself to be with someone who is not the person that God has for you, it's going to work itself a loose eventually. It's not going to work out. Not if you're sincerely seeking the path that God has for you. And if God does not have that person for you, then eventually there's going to be a breakup. And then you have to deal with um, the fact that you've put all this time in, then the children have to readjust to something that they never should have adjusted to in the first place. And then what um, seems normal, they don't recognize it as normal because they've adjusted to dysfunction. And all of these things that we say that we're doing for the children, we, we really end up just causing more damage than good in the end, simply because we're not following the Lord from the beginning. And so in this situation, if you know, you know, Lord, this is one of the things that you spoke to me, you know, and I know someone just came in on the line. So I'm going to just kind of repeat this real quick. We have a sister here who shared something personal, um, you know, with us, uh, you know, just a personal situation that we're addressing and that we're going to continue to address tonight. And um, so I'm just kind of addressing her directly right now that if you know that the Lord has spoken concerning your marital situation and so you have to keep yourself from moving in your own emotions and you have to keep yourself from doing what your own natural mind thinks is the best thing to do. You have to allow your relationship with the Lord and the word of the Lord to have final say 
and to supersede and override anything that you feel or think concerning your life. That means you have to continue following him. And whomever it is that God has for you, it will be evident. You won't struggle with that. You won't wonder about it. There won't be any second guessing or anything like that. And so, you know, you, you made the statement that, I mean, you, you didn't, um, you're sure that you're not supposed to be with him, um, he, if, especially if he doesn't have a relationship with the Lord, because um, somebody who is following the Lord should not be unequally yoked with somebody who's not. And the man has to lead the family. And if he's not following the Lord, he's not going to lead you to the Lord. So um, that's just kind of to sum that up. You know, with that and there's just for, you know, all who are listening, because, of course, you know, everybody who calls in is not married or, you know, maybe you are married. And, of course, we've kind of gone over this question of, you know, well, what do you do if you're already in it and you're not sure that the Lord put you together? You just have to stay there and, until either the, this person gets saved and the Lord work it out or it's split up, but you can't make it happen. Mm -hmm. You stay and you honor your vows. But if you're at that place where, you know, you're really seeking the Lord about direction concerning your marriage and things like that, the best thing to do is to continue seeking the Lord. Don't lean to your own understanding because that's where we get in trouble at. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's why the word tells us, you know, over in Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, we need to acknowledge him in all our ways. And don't think for one second that, oh, you know, I got this part. Lord, I can handle the relationship area. You just handle the job and you handle the boss and you handle the children and you ha handle the family and the neighbors and all of this. But I got the relationship part and we can't make that mistake. Mm -hmm. And let me just say this, uh, sister, and, and for all of those, you know, uh, you may wonder where that comes from, the, the, the even the consideration, you know, and it's because women have this strong sense of family, especially black women, when it comes to, uh, like if, if once you, you, you've had children with this man, and so naturally, so you want to kind of consolidate the family, you know, the family unit and things. And, and women especially think about their children in, re in relationships, if that make any sense. So you would probably think, when I heard you use the word convenient, you know, and you think, I, I imagine you would think in your mind, well, he's, we have children together, it would work out, we're, we're, you know, we're already a family except we're not married, if that make any sense. So we're already dealing with, you know, we already have children together. So, you know, that, that's a lot of where that consideration comes in at. Also, something that the Lord had brought to my attention while, while you were talking was um, in the slavery days, um, basically black men, you know, of course they were pulling families apart and selling children off and splitting the families, you know, breaking up the family units. Well, you know, in reading black history, you know, if you'll study it, you'll see that w when slavery was abolished, it was mostly the black mothers who were going to look for their children. You see, it was it was them that was doing that. They were the ones, now it don't mean that, that men weren't looking for the children, but mostly history records that it was black women who were looking for their children that had been sold off when they were little, you know. And so, and a lot of them were successful in finding them and things like that. But I guess what I'm saying is that whole sense of family it, it's something that's embedded in, in, in women, you know, in, in women. And, and uh, you know, and just, again, you know, t t just talking about how women, when, when they, I guess when they think about family, when they think about um, husband and, and things like that, or who will be their husband, they, if, especially if they already have children, they think, they look at the whole picture now, you know, men, for the most part, we look at, oh, she'll be a good woman for me. Some of us have enough sense to know, okay, if I have children, is she going to be a good mother to my children? But women, they come with that in them. He's going to be a good husband for me, but he'll also be a good father for my children if I already have some, you see, or 
whatever. And so they look at that whole picture, and that's what makes it easier, you know, because... And then, you know, I remember seeing on TV there was a study where they saw, you know, they were basically studying humans, and they, was, they were looking at fathers and mothers and the differences between the two, how the fathers, when they were in public places, the average distance that they felt comfortable away from their children was about 50 feet. They could, you know, go roaming around the <laughs> store and, you know, it, in their minds, and that's just how men are, we don't think, you know, it's not just in us to just think, well, somebody can snatch my child or somebody can, you know, because we're just, we're not as attached, if, I, if that make any sense. Whereas the women, it was less than nine feet. When, when their child got more than nine feet away from them, they were looking around because women, I mean, like, for instance, my wife, uh, you know, in our home, if, they, if she hearing it bumping in the night or whatever, she's going to get up and she's going to pace the floor. She's going to go upstairs and look and make sure everything's okay. Me, I don't think that way. I mean, if I feel like somebody's breaking in here, then it's going to be something. But other than that, you know, hey, everybody's fine. But if that make any sense, women think of more along those lines than, than men do. Whereas we're protectors and we just, you know, okay, everything is in place, everything is fine. But, but women, they're more along the line of safety, you know, as far as it, it don't take much, in other words, for them to really spring out and, and try to guard the child, I guess you could say. And so I'm, I guess what I'm saying in essence is, that they bring that into relationships as well like you would feel safer most a lot of women if they have children and and maybe they're not married or you know at the moment um they feel safer with a, a man who's the father of that child whereas you know say for instance you you marry somebody that's not the father of your biological children they have to gain your trust, not only for you, but on your children's side as well. Okay, yeah, they'll treat me well. That's the way women think now, you know. They'll treat me well, but how are they going to treat my children? Are they going to love them the way that I love them? And, you know, because, of course, you probably heard of situations. A man love his wife or treat his wife right, but not necessarily accepting the children and things like that. And so... Um, I think that, that a lot of that comes with that, you know, from, from that is the woman thinking along those lines of also incorporating the children. And then this society have kind of played into that as well because it has just been assumed that when mom and daddy split up, children automatically go with mama, you see. And so it, that, the society have, have played into that as well. And so I think that's where a lot of the... Uh, just the consideration comes in at if that if that make any sense of this is besides this is what you already know I've been with him I know what I'm dealing with already even if it's not uh, the best to deal with I already know what's there you know whereas you know and, and it's, it's something because sometimes we can get comfortable or Sometimes we, we can learn to adjust better to what we already know rather than meeting somebody for the first time and then having to get to know them, you know, and, and stuff like that and having to trust them. Whereas somebody from our past, we trust what we know about them already. Okay, you're not going to come in until 11 o'clock. I already know that about you. So we don't have to fight in the future about it. I already know. You know, whereas this new person, I got to get, get to know you. I got to go through a few surprises, you see, <laughs> and so it's just more comfortable sometimes to us in our flesh dealing with what we already know, regardless of how, you know, lopsided it may be or how outside of God's will it may be. Do you have something you want to say? Mm -hmm. And so I just, I, I think that kind of plays into that as well. And um, of course, you you know, Trying to think, what should I address? What, what the, well, I'm, I'm gonna speak from a man's perspective, and that's now you've heard, you know, like I told you, my wife would give her perspective concerning the the the, the, the woman. I want to speak from a man's perspective and let you know what's what angle he may be coming from, and this is for 
just, you know, women in general as well. A man knows when he's had a good woman and regardless, it doesn't matter how, what he was chasing after or, you know, how out in the world he may be. He knows when he's had a, a good woman and a lot of times a man, you know, of course men, we're just naturally conquerors. In other words, uh, if we're not maturing the Lord, then our mindset would be, um, I want you as long as I think I can't have you. But when I get you, then I look for something else to conquer, if that make any sense. That's the, that's, you know, we just, we're conquerors. And so when a man have had a good woman and he's used to her being around, so to speak, you know, in his life, however you may be in his life, he get used to that idea that now this is, this is what I have here, which is why men, and I was explaining that to my wife earlier, that's why men would have a good wife at home or, ha you know, a good woman at home and then go out and cheat and still expect the woman to be at home. They want both, they want their cake and eat it too, so to speak. Whereas most of the time a woman, you know, if, if they're out doing that, then they're done with what's at home. They just in transition to go home somewhere. Men, they want what's at home and whatever it is out there. I'm just, you know, just saying unsaved, you know. And so if that's the mindset, then the mindset is also as soon as I think I may be losing you or whatever we have, you know, even if it's not us being together, but just the situation changing in any kind of way, then I'm going to panic and do what it takes to get you, if that make any sense. Is, does that, am I making sense? In other words, you know, I'm used, to, I'm used to you not being with anybody, or I'm used to you being with me, and, and I'm not used to you being Mrs. whoever, Mrs. Jones or whoever. And so as soon as I feel like, you know, you may be actually looking at somebody else, then I'm threatened, and now I'm going to act right, and now I'm going to do what it takes to be with you. The only problem is, if you give in to that, they'll act good for a little while, but then they'll go back to what they were before because they got you. You see? And so that's the mindset of a man, a conqueror, you know, just one that uh, as long as I know I have you and as long as you're putting up with my mess, then we're fine. But as soon as I feel like there's a threat, and somebody else could get you, even if we weren't together, because I can't tell you the number of times I've seen that, you know. We're not together for years, and all of a sudden I see you actually getting interested in somebody else or saying you may marry somebody else. Now I'm, a, now I'm coming after you because I can't stand the idea of the, the, the possibility of me being able to go back to you when I choose. And so if you marry somebody else, then I don't, that door isn't open anymore. Even though I wasn't interested in walking through it until you told me. You see, does that make sense of what I'm saying? So a lot of times that's the mindset. <laughs> you want to respond to what? Um, no, I mean, that makes, it makes sense that that's what's going on. I just felt like it was a distraction. Mm -hmm. Because, like I said, we haven't been together in three years. Why now? And even when I asked him that, he didn't really know what to say. He was just like, quiet. So, I mean, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's what we're wanting to address. We're, we're addressing the natural sides of it. And we wanted to address those first. But we also want to address the spiritual side. And that's exactly what's going on is a, is a distraction. Uh, if God tell you something, and you believe it in your heart, then it's the devil's job to test you. And he's not, and he's going to come, as I've stated before, with what's familiar with you. You know, he's going to come with what is familiar with you. And what's familiar with you is your ex. And uh, so that's what he's going to tempt you with to try to get you, 
to try to throw you off, you know, off of God's perfect will for your life, you know. And I, I think about something quite often. How many of us miss the blessings of God because we accept, I guess, the devil's pseudo blessings, if that make any sense? How many relationships have we been in and, you know, all alone God had one person for us, but because we're in a relationship with somebody we shouldn't be with, we've missed what God has for us. And we've, pro we've pushed back the appointment, the divine appointment that God had set up. And you, you see what I mean? And, and that goes on all the time where, you know, I, I, I guess I kind of think about, um, I kind of think about Ishmael and Isaac, you know. Abraham, the, the, the children of Israel to this day are at war with the children of, of uh, Ishmael and Esau because, you know, one of them's daughter married, the, the other one's son and things like that because Abraham didn't want to wait on the promise at first. He did his own will, which is, and called himself trying to help God out. Well, my wife Sarah can't have children naturally, so... I'll take her advice and I'll go in and I'll sleep with Hagar, her maid. And so Ishmael was produced from that. And, you know, and then God had to come and tell him, no, you're going to have a child with Sarah. But, you know, and, he, and so Abraham's thing was, Lord, bless, bless Ishmael. He's my son. Bless him. You know, he wanted God to accept Ishmael as the son of promise. And a lot of times we won't. We'll get ourselves in situations, you know, and in relationships, and then we want God to bless it. And the whole time, when we, if we look at the history of Ishmael and Isaac, we see in the book of Genesis how the Bible says that basically Ishmael teased Isaac. He tormented him, which is why his mother, Isaac's mother, threw Ishmael and, her, and his mother out of the house. Y'all can't, y'all can't live here anymore. And what happens a lot of times when we don't wait on the promise of God, then we end up producing Ishmael's that's, that's designed to torment the promise of God for our life. That's designed to try to throw it off some kind of way, if that make any sense. you know. And a lot of times that happens through relationships that we've been in, and, and then we get scarred, we get hurt, and then when we go into... The, the relationship or marriage that God has for us, those scars are still there and we bring them in there and we're still dealing with the hurt, you know, and, and, and living that in our, in our current uh, relationship or marriage. And so that is 